Do you ever get the sense that you just need a little space? Well, then this is a perfect time to talk about reverb. Now, reverb is a massive, complicated topic. There's a million and one manufacturers. There's convolution versus algorithmic. We're not even going to talk about hardware. There's a million things to choose from. And I can't choose for you, but what I can do is walk you through my setup, tell you about why it works for me, and maybe that'll help you when you're setting up your stuff. Let's do it. Okay, for those of you starting from scratch, let me go over the five main types of reverb. Everybody else, skip down to where I talk about my setup. Okay, who's left? So, the five types of reverb, three based on real spaces, and then two that are mechanical. Uh, the real ones are the room, the chamber, and the hall. And then the fake ones are the spring and the plate. Now, you can almost build any reverb off of one of those five. And you'll also kind of find as you go along that certain reverbs uh, go better with certain types of music or with certain types of instruments. Um, there's always exceptions to all those rules. Uh, but let's talk about the, the generalities here. Now think about where you normally listen to a rock band. It's a rock club. It's a room. It's a small space, short reverb time, lots of early reflections. Now think about where you hear an orchestra. They're in a hall. Longer reverb tail, less early reflections. Everything is kind of further away. I mean, think about it, you're here, the orchestra's up there, the walls are over there, things, you know, take time to get to your ear. And the last is the chamber. Now, a chamber is basically just a big reflective room. It's dedicated to creating an ambience where one didn't exist. And there's some really famous ones too. There's Capitol Records, there's Abbey Road, uh, there's the Motown one, Hitsville, USA, and you can get emulations of all of these things, which is kind of cool. Now, in the artificial side of things, first, there's plates, which are just big, heavy plates of metal. The EMT-140 was the original and I think still the most famous. It's really great for drums, guitars, and personally I like it for big, long ambient verbs, but I'll talk about that later. And they're great for stuff that you want to feature out front. Now lastly is the spring reverb, which started out really as an effect for an organ, but then was adopted later by Fender and they put it into a guitar amp and, well, now we have surf music. Now beyond those five, you'll also find stuff like cathedral and church. These are special case ones that are like really long. There's uh, non-linear stuff like reverse reverbs and gated reverbs, thanks to Hugh Padgham in the 80s. Um, there's shimmer reverbs like Valhalla Shimmer and Strymon Big Sky, which is also a really sought after guitar pedal. But those five, that's the basics. That will get you most of what you ever need. Okay, we got that out of the way. Let's get down to it. Now. My reverb setup has changed a few times over the years. Uh, for a long time, it was Revive running in Pro Tools and Altiverb and Renaissance Verb running in my DAW. Now, of course, having an HDX system uh, means I could have as many reverbs as I wanted, so I did. I had a reverb for every single stem. And in fact, when I went back to working inside the box, I kept that workflow because it was familiar. But more recently, I've started using a modified version of the three reverb setup, or three verb. Basically, it's one my colleagues like to use because it's easy on the CPU. It means you can make global changes to your reverb settings without having to change 40 different stems. Uh, and the only drawback is that you can't print all your stems in one pass. It's really time consuming. Now, my friend Joshua, though, says that's the perfect time to put the kettle on. So very civilized answer to that little problem. Basically, the three verb idea is one each of short, medium and long reverbs, which would, in a very general sense, cover all your bases. So I use this concept as my starting point and I built from there. Now my basic three happen to be built in seventh heaven, but there's strong runner ups for me like Fab Filter stuff and the uh, Valhalla line. A lot of great stuff out there. You choose what works for you. Okay, let's start with the short verb. So basically this is a place to put bone dry samples and to get them into a real space and, and make them a little more stereo, give them a little bit of liveliness. Now to demonstrate here, I've pulled up a drum sample and muted all of the room mics and ambient mics. So the sample is bone dry. You can hear by adding a little bit of the room in. And you can kind of season to taste. Let's look at this damaged combo. Same kind of thing here. I've turned off all of the room mics here, brought all the samples all the way fo forward. We'll turn off the reverb. You can hear with these samples, there is a bit of room in there still. 
But if I add this, So as you can see, it's not a lot, it's just enough to give it a little bit of space, a little bit of liveliness. And next I've got hall verbs. I have a medium and a long. They're both based off the same algorithm. The important thing about having two reverbs of the same algorithm with different decay times gives me a little leeway. I can send you either a tighter sounding hall, this 1.5, which is great for foreground instruments as well as anything more aggressive like short strings and brass, and a longer verb with a bit more pre-delay and a lusher, more distant sound but they're the same algorithm, so they sound like they're in the same space. Okay, to demonstrate this, I wanna show you this in context. I'm gonna start with the Spitfire Strings, a short patch, which actually has its own reverb baked in. But we're gonna take that out. I'm gonna to go to just close mics, which I've changed right here. And we're gonna put in just the medium hall. So you can see how it's nice for detailed stuff like that. For instance, if I went to the larger hall, that's the 2.5 second one here. See, it's a little too much, but that kind of sound is great for long strings. So I can kind of mix and match based on how I'm going to use the sound. So a shorter haul for the more detailed and aggressive stuff, and then the longer haul for the longer, lusher stuff. Okay, moving on to plates. I have two plates, one at 1.5 seconds and the second at around three seconds here. You'll notice the uh, longer the plate, I add a little more modulation and I take a little bit more low end off just because uh, I don't want it to get boomy. Now to show you the difference on those two, I uh, pulled up a dry acoustic guitar patch. So I do like plates for guitars. So here's the medium plate. And with a long plate, Now, of course, let's go back to that room sound again, just for fun. You'll notice that it's still nice for just getting a little bit of space around it so it's not fully antiseptic. Now, again, I'll use these plates on stuff that I want to stand out from the orchestra. Uh, they're great on stuff like guitars, uh, pianos, dulcimers, uh, some percussion vocals they're great on. So uh, again, I got a mix and match kind of setup, a medium plate and a long plate using a very similar uh, algorithm, well, the same algorithm as the 140, but uh, with just slightly different settings. And it covers my basses. Okay, this next one, this is my absolute favorite. Uh, this has been in my palette for 15 years or more. Um, you take a plate, set it to 10 seconds or 15 seconds or even more, put a lot of modulation on it and a little bit of delay in front of it, but no pre-delay, just an actual delay in front of it. And uh, it's great for single notes that just, you want them to just ring out forever. Let me show you. So I pulled up this Chilesse patch here. Let's listen to it bone dry. And let's hear it with the super long ambient verb. So. That's that. As you can see here, um, I put an Echo Boy with the mix down very low, actually. This is, uh, this is on the effects um, send, but I'm keeping the mix actually um, 
closer to the dry side because I needed to feed the reverb. In any event, um, then the reverb in this case set to 16 seconds, got the modulation up kind of high, drop a lot of the low end uh, out just to make sure, again, it doesn't get rumbly or woofy. In this case, I changed the Celeste mics to overhead and mid. Uh, I didn't like the close mics because they're a little on the thumpy side for, for this kind of application. So in this case, as you see, I'm still using the sound toys. Um, I also have used the Valhalla Shimmer, Eventide's Black Hole. Uh, you also, some of the 480 stuff, like the one from Native Instruments would work probably as well. So anything that does a super, super long plate would work. Now, one other thing I do, and this is a really common technique, so I'll cover it really quickly, is I EQ the sends going into the reverb. It's often called the Abbey Road technique. I don't know, air quotes all the time. Um, but you're just basically uh, rolling off low end here, rolling off some high end before it hits the verb. It keeps the verb from getting too boomy or getting too sizzly. Uh, Cubase users, make note, uh, you cannot use the channel EQ to do this. Um, this EQ actually comes after the inserts, so you would be EQing the output. You can use pre and put in low roll off there, excuse me, high, high roll off and a low roll off there, or just do what I did, which is just drop in an EQ, any kind of EQ, I just happen to use Pro Q3. Okay, so that's my setup. It's pretty specific to the way I work, but it does cover not just orchestra, but pretty much anything else I can throw at it. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next one.